Now we know under extreme conditions uh, that uh, people have uh, a sense presence. They sense somebody else in the room with them. So we're not only good at, at somehow constructing a sense of self, and we don't really know how that's done, but there's some interesting ideas about that. Uh, but we're also able to construct somebody else in our head. But because the brain can only construct one self, however it does that, it's probably just some module that coordinates all the other neural networks together into one thing, something like that. But under certain conditions, people can sense that there's somebody else in the, well, but it can't be in the head because there's only one of these, so it must be somewhere in the room. So uh, this is, I think, is the basis of, um, of uh, the belief in alien abductions and, uh, and a lot of the ghost stories we hear and this sort of thing. So I have a whole section in, in the book about um, the sense presence effect. Uh, I interviewed some, uh, uh, not just ultramarathon and athletes, because I know some of them, but also some of the K2 climbers and Everest climbers, uh, a lot of them have sense presences where they've gotten to the point where they talk to their imaginary friend in the tent or on the ropes, especially. So it's in this case, they're cold, high altitude. Uh, often they're hungry because they don't feel like eating at that altitude. And uh, and they're often alone. So, uh, But it isn't just apoxia, oxygen deprivation, because solo sailors get it at sea level, and solo flyers, and Arctic explorers, and the mushers, those guys that do the Iditarod. A lot of them have these bizarre, so we just call them hallucinations, but no, it's more interesting than that. They actually see people and talk to them. Uh, some of them have imagined somebody sitting there on the sled, and they talk to them, and they talk back, and they have conversations. It's incredible. <laughs> and they're not crazy. It's just under certain conditions, the brain gets tricked into this. Okay, why do we care about that? Because this shows us how easy the brain is at concocting agents, potential agents and beings and essences that are out there populating the world. So if it can happen under this condition and that condition, and they're not consistent, this really is the basis of you know, spirituality and religion, belief in the afterlife and gods and so on. You add all that together, and you end up with a worldview that is pretty, pretty deeply ingrained. That, um, that scientists have, to, scientists are, uh, you know, have to sort of face the facts that these these beliefs are really strong, and the scientific answer is counterintuitive. 